We have 34 acres over there, 20 camels and one on 10 acres. Uh, today we're going to do a demonstration with the camels. We want to show you how neat they really are. I mean, camels for us really are like, like big puppies. You know, you've heard horrible stories about them, so we need to dispel some of those. So, what is, what is one of the biggest stories, the bad things about camels? What do they do? They spin. It was only the front row. But um, actually, we've never had any of our camels spin on us, ever. This is in 20 years. You know, they only spin on people that have treated them badly for a long period of time. Camel has to learn how to spit. So after a few months, maybe being treated as a beast burden or disease or something like that, the camel learns how to spit. And then he never forgets because it's so much fun. And that's what's going to make his sense of humor comes in, because he's not a zoo, and it's kind of boring, and the kid walks by and he goes, aha, look at this. And he spits at the kid, and there's all this hysterical fun for about 20 minutes. So they have a weird sense of humor, too, as well. Now, like I said, when we work with them, it really is working more like working with, um, thank you, with, a, with a dog or, or, or a puppy. That's kind of our relationship with them. This is Samson. Samson. Samson is my hat. Samson. This is what Samson likes to do. He just grab my hat the whole time and talk. If I'm not talking, I'm paying attention to him. Then he'll actually hang out a little bit more. Now, we have horses at the ranch, and horses are different than camels. Horses have predators in the wild. I love my horses, but a horse, when you bring him to a new situation, a lot of times he's just going to spook. Because horses are predators, he gets a new situation and he goes, oh, I think this is going to kill me. So I'm just going to explode, I'm going to take off. Camels don't do that. Camels don't have predators in the wild. There's nothing that eats them. So when a camel comes into a new situation, the camel just stops and thinks about it. And that makes working with them a completely different way than working with my horses. Like, like my horse. I love my horse. She's a leopard up so she's beautiful, she's wonderful. But when I go to pick up her feet sometimes, she'll say, hey, don't pick up my feet. So I keep touching it and touching it, desensitizing it, until she goes, okay, I understand. This isn't gonna hurt, you can pick up my foot. Well, if I go to a camel and try to pick up his foot and he says, hey, I don't really want you to pick up my foot right now, if I keep touching his foot and trying to, to pick it up, he starts getting emotional and he starts getting upset. And then he thinks, he thinks it's personal. He's, he's more like, I told you not to pick up my foot. You took him out the car, you're really trying to bother me. So when you go to a camel, you go and touch another foot, another foot, you pet him a little bit, and then you come back to the foot and you pick it up. So there's no problem. But this is a different way of working with these guys. They're very, very emotional and they're a different way of thinking. Like I said, if you look at them, up, they're like a big puppy who uh, does something neat and then you go ahead and you get him a, a, a trick or something, give him a treat, then that's what you look at. There you go. That's it. So he'll do this all day. Now, I'm going to ask him to lay down, but before I ask him to lay down, I want you to show you how he does that. He's going to lay down on the big pads that he has on his elbows and his knees and his chest pad. If you look at the camels that we have tied, a lot of people think that those are big sores on the elbows and knees and right here between the chest. Those are actually specific pads that protect the camel when he lays down. Because camels are out in the desert where it's hot, there's rocks, there's thorns, and they want to lay down to take a nap during the day and sleep at night, so they need to protect themselves. So when I ask him to lay down, watch how he folds up and puts all his weight on those pads. Push. Go ahead and push something. Push. And I'm just going to wait a moment and see if he does, and then he'll get a little bit of a treat. But the pads I'm talking about are over here. He has these pads, and then two pads over here, and a big chest pad right over here. And when he pushes, all his weight is going to be on that. Go ahead, push. Push, push. There you go. Push. And he'll fold up in a second. There you go, just like that. Let's give him a big hand. Another thing about it is the treats. Now, we used to have a buffet grain out here, and he was pushing it before I said anything. The moment I touch his pad, he goes down. He wants a bucket of grain. Now we're shifting to little treats, and he's like, I don't know if I want to push for a little treat. So it takes him longer to do it, but we'll work through it. But he's, he's thinking through the whole time, everything that we're doing. He knows the snakes, what we're going to do, and he's, and he's following my hand as the treats. He's like, oh, now I want to show you his lips on the camel. The lips are prehensile. You know how monkeys have a prehensile tail? They grab on the things and can hang on. Well, camels can't hang on by their prehensile lip, but they can use that to grab branches from trees that other animals can't get to and go ahead and pull them down and eat them. Am I boring you? Is this a boring show? 
So, it's very similar to that. Look at his upper lip. See, there's no teeth over here in front. Is this like other ruminants? He has three stomachs, he chews his cut, and he doesn't have teeth in front. He does have really sharp uh, molars in the back on both sides. So now look. See his upper lips? See that? That's the, right here. He has muscles in his lips, and he can move them just like tweezers. He grabs something and pull them down. Now I'm going to show you how high he can reach. I couldn't do this when he was standing up because he probably could reach like 15 feet up high. So we're going to use this. Right here. Oh, up, up, up. We weren't doing it, and then I said, oh, I think you can show people some interesting thing uh, about camels. And I'll show you how far you can actually turn his head around. Because when you're milking a camel, you'll be standing right over here, and in the first time, you know, she's not too sure, and she'll be nose to nose with you. You'll be looking over, and she's just like, right here, nose on you. I know, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. Yes, you're going to get that hat. Thank you. Thank you. Very good boy. So this watch is to see how far it could go. A little bit more. Good boy, that's a good boy. You see how far he can stretch his neck? It's really amazing that they can make they can move it. I'm gonna show you one more stretch that he can do. And the reason I wanted to show it is because I was riding camels in the Sinai Desert uh, last year, and we were all way riding our camels, we were sitting in front of the hump, and one of the tourists was sitting in front of the hump and had the reins, and he was yanking on the reins back and forth. And I was upset about it. I looked at the bed and I said, is this okay for you? And he said, just wait one second, patience. What his camel did is his camel turned his head all the way backwards and faced nose to nose with that person and let out a big roar. And that person just let go of his reins as fast as he could. And I'm going to show you how far they can turn their head backwards. Look at this straight. Good. More. 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 Good. 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 Let's see what they can. Okay, that's, that's the stretch on these guys. Which is really neat. When you're riding your, your, your camel, I mean, they just turn around and smell you and say hi to you whenever they want to. You're a good boy. Now, because they don't have predators, they don't get scared about stuff, our camels carry kings into churches. Uh, last year, Samson over here carried a king on his back into Shadow Mountain Church in El Cajon. There's 1,800 people in the audience. There's a choir and an orchestra and a pastor speaking, and he's not afraid. He walks all the way down, he pushes, he kneels down, and then he gets some treats, and he can't wait to do it again. Because that's what he wants. He really enjoys it. But what happened is that when we started, I started asking him to come with me up the aisle. He stopped and he refused to move. And he brought me back towards two seats, and he reached over two people and kissed the silver-haired woman right here on her cheeks. <laughs> it was the cutest thing. I said, oh, this is really nice. But when I started walking away, the pastor stopped his whole sermon and said, that cattle has good taste. <laughs> it turns out that was the pastor's wife. About 1,800 people. So Samson has our back. So they call us and they want us to come back next year because of this boy right here. Just a wonderful camel, really good work with. I'm going to see if he's going to get up for us. I don't know. I'll tell you, do you ever have like a, like a dog that's your little puppy, they get away with everything, but they're so cute, you just love them? Samson's like this. When we're out doing jobs with him, like we're walking parties and everything, he's perfect. I say, up, oh, he gets up. I say, push, he follows me everywhere. But when we're here doing the show, he knows he can get away with everything. So he just lays down. And this story type. Do you want some treats? Look at these wonderful treats. Pop, 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 pop. Come on, let's go. This isn't going to work, is it? Come on, Samson. Up, up, up. Look, he's just turning his head away from me like I don't see you. I don't see you. Come here, let's go. <laughs> this isn't going to happen. So we, let, we do let the camels kind of, you know, do their own thing over here in the show. So I'm going to let them sit down. I'm going to bring up the mom and baby. Um, our mom over here is a new camel. We're training her for milking. We're not milking her yet, but we're going to show you on the training and talk all the way about her. Her name is Knuckles. She was born on our ranch seven years ago. We sold her as a youngster to French cars. A month ago, they called us up and said, we're selling Knuckles with her baby. So we paid all the money we could, and we bought Knuckles back, and we bought her little baby. Her baby is five months old, and he's the sweetest little guy. We've never had a baby camel that was just like so sweet like this guy over here. He's been a little bit more shy the last, uh, last couple of days. Come over here, little baby. Come here. But usually baby camels, when you come up to them, they run away. They just keep, they run away and they don't want to really hang out with you. This guy, look at him. He's the sweetest little boy in the world. You just love him. 
So when you see him doing the show, think about a name for him, because we don't have a name yet, and we're doing a contest on Facebook. It's going to be on our um, fan page, Royce's Camelberry fan page. If you go ahead and put a name for a baby camel there, you can win one of our wonderful Royce's Camelberry t-shirts and a beautiful nice bar of whole milk, whole milk chocolate as well. So think of a name for this guy, because he really is spectacular, and he's going to stay, and he's going to be our third sire eventually. He'll be the father of many, many baby camels, because his genetics are very calm. And that's what you want to do. You always want to choose the calm ones, the ones that are really good, that are really good milkers. And her mother is just a wonderful, wonderful camel. So I'm going to talk a little bit about milking uh, camels and how it's different from milking cows, and then show you some of the training that I'm doing here with a, with a mom. But on a cow dairy, when a cow gives birth, the mother doesn't have to see the baby, she gives you milk twice a day. On a cattle dairy, the mother has to see her baby. The baby has to be right there in order to stimulate her to drop milk, to ask for milk. <laughs> So every time you see a baby cat, mother cat will give milk, there's a baby right there for the whole year of lactation. The mom raises her own, own baby. Now what happens is a baby goes over to the mother and he nuzzles her others, she smells them, and when she smells it, that's really her baby, she gives milk. And mother cat won't give milk to any other baby. What happens is that she decides to give milk. She has eight liters up in the udder, and she will scream oxytocin as the hormone that goes into the muscles, it will push the milk from the udder that has the eight liters into the four teeth. Now when you see the four teeth fill up with milk, you run in and start milking as fast as you can because camels only give milk for 90 seconds at a time. That's it. So if you're texting, you're talking, or anything like that, you miss the whole thing. First day I know it was over in, in uh, Israel, they had 20 milking cows, and I just, I was looking at the babies and everything, I didn't get anything. Now when we milk, we have one person on each side for a milking machine, and we get four liters of milk. That's half of what she has. Ten minutes later, she drops it in for her baby, and her baby gets all the milk that he wants, and we go from there. Overseas, they separate the moms from babies all night and bring them so the baby won't get all the milk. And in the morning, they go ahead and they're able to get the milk. He really likes treats. It's about an egg for this guy. Um, and so they separate them. We didn't want to separate our moms from babies all the time. They were watching Discovery Channel and in the desert, the babies and the moms are together, but the mom has a cover on her udder. And that keeps the baby from drinking. When they uncover the udder, they share their milk production. And then, you know, it's the baby. He thinks I'm a dispenser for treats. He's like, well, what can I do in order to get this thing to dispense treats? So this is what they have on the Discovery Channel, the Bedouins. This covers the udder. It goes right over here. It's an udder cover. The street does steps go on the mother. It took me six months to learn how to put a bra on a camel. It took forever. This is a utilitarian bra. This is a Victoria's Secret from here. It's very, very pretty. I'm going to show you how I put on her because this is her training. Once she learns how to have this, then we can start milking her. We won't have to separate the baby. The first week I was here, I was very, very careful putting this on because a camel can break a 4x4 four four with a rear kick. Not only that, but it, her rear kick actually comes, um, uh, pivots over there, so she can kick me all the way over here, and all the way over here, and all the way over here. You can be holding a camel, and she can kick you with the back leg right here. And if she wanted to, she can turn around and bite me right here. You saw how, how far her head moves. So, because I work with camels, it doesn't mean that I you know, I'm never going to get kicked. It just means that I'm very, very careful and I read my camels very well. So what we have been doing, Lucy, do you have a brush? Yeah, Lucy's is brushing her right now. And that's what we do when we get them used to something new. We're brushing our camels to make this very comfortable. I can't pin her down and hold her. She's stronger than me. She's lacking. So everything has to be done in a way that she understands it. She understands what I want to do with her, and she's calm. If the camel isn't calm, I just back off, and I don't do as much. Now, the first week I did this, I was not over here. I was very, very careful in every movement that I had. Now, I'm just coming right in here, standing right behind her, and I feel safe, because now she's very comfortable. Of course, first time I try to put this on it, she just grab it with her mouth and pull it off. But what I want to show you, is how far we've become. This is how the other cover goes on the other. And that way the baby can't get all the milk until you untie it, you share the milk production, and then you tie it back up, and the mom raises their baby. But so look how sweet she is. Look, he's trying to help out. You're such a good boy. You're doing a great job. Good boy. During this demo, if you have any questions about camels, let me know. Because I'm doing it for Sony. I actually started working with camels when I was 18 years old. 
So I have lots of information about them. We can go ahead and put it back in. This These guys are the dromedary camels. They're the one hump camels. They come from the hot desert. They're slick and they're tall to get them away from that heat. And then the two hump desert camel comes from the um, Gobi Desert. That's a bat tree. And he's stocky and short and has a lot of fur on him. And you can breed them both together. And people ask me, do you get a three hump camel? You no, know, if you breed them together, you get a one hump camel that has a flat hump. A flat, this flat, and about this long with two tufts of hair. It's the weirdest thing when you look at a silhouette of a camel and you just see that flat thing over there. That's okay. We're going to go ahead and bring out Goldie. And we're going to put some, and we're going to make sure that our, so we're going to close the bin so she doesn't get to any of our trees, anything like that. She's like, well, you are a good boy. This is very nice because we've been shy the last few days and hasn't been coming out here at all. Goldie's a 28-year-old female. Now, she's a great story because we've taken camels that are sick. Uh, people don't abuse their camels in the United States. What happens is sometimes they get a camel and they or their vets don't know what to do with them. So we take them in. Like Goldie over here, when we first got her, come here, Goldie, you can hang out with me. When we first got Goldie, she had no hump. And the hump is fat. So if she has no hump whatsoever, it means that she was very, very skinny. And her back went straight across and no hump whatsoever. So we worked with her for two months and she gained 150 pounds. So every day, Goldie, I was just telling you, hey, you get I'm not your mother. Get away from my eyes. Goldie! She goes into the granny. She's our She's 28 years old. She gets to do whatever she wants to do. Like that. Two months later, beautiful baby pump. And we've taken a lot of camels. We have four camels that we're taking in right now that are doing really good on our veterinary program with our veterinarians. Any questions you can ask? I know it's a little hot, so I want to hear you a little bit. Did you guys go? Yes. What about the pendulous bottom lip? Oh, what about the, the bottom lip on Jamal over there? Uh -huh. um, he has a bottom lip, he's, he's in charge. So a camel, when he feels in charge, he wants to show you he's in charge, he's relaxed, he just drops his little lip. And then he's in charge. Sometimes you'll go into a, into a, like a, a red, like a pasture with a camel, and his lip will be up, and when you walk up to him, his lip goes down. Okay, I'm in charge. So that's Jamal, that's, that's what Jamal does. He's an 18 year old male building, and you can see he has uh, some brand as well. Camel milk is a wonderful milk. It's the closest milk to human mother's milk. It has insulin in it, so it's good for diabetic. It tastes like cow's milk. Vitamin C, high in protein, no allergies to it. Really good for Crohn's disease and colitis, and actually autistic children are drinking it too. We don't sell the milk yet. We make wonderful product. We have a wonderful moisturizing lotion and lip balm that we have for sale right over there after the show. It's a cow milk chocolate, which is fantastic. But there are some places that do sell the milk in the United States. Thank you. Yes. How long do they live? They live to about 35 or 40 years. So this girl over here is 28 years old. I just looked up her paperwork a month ago and I was like, oh no, 28 already? But she's in perfect health. Yes. How long can they go without drinking? That's a great question. They can go two weeks without drinking any water in the hot desert sun. The mother camel will put even more water into her milk in order to give that to her baby. This doesn't stress them. They lose 20% of their body weight, which will kill a human being. That's like a bathtub full of water. Drink it in 10 minutes and keep going. They can drink ocean water for a short period of time also. And they don't lose a lot of water. They're very good at conserving it. Like, what do we do when it gets really hot? What are our bodies, what are our bodies doing right now? They sweat, exactly. Well, a camel is smart. Instead of keeping his body at 98.3 all the time and sweating to keep himself there, he lets his body temperature rise. Right now, in the morning, she was 98.3. Right now, I bet you this camel is 101, 102 degrees. Late in the afternoon on a hot day, her body temperature will be 107 degrees. And she'll only start sweating after that. One more thing about her, this is her winter coat right over here that I left on to show you guys. It keeps her nice and warm all winter. Look at it, it just comes off in the summer just like that. And then in the summer she has a beautiful short for her as well. I'm going to be going over here by the fence a little bit more so everybody can head her. I'll be here if you have any kind of questions about panels, anything you want to know. This is going to be the right up with our products. We make the lotion and lip balm ourselves. The lip balm won't dry out the lip. It's moisturizing. It's amazing stuff and the lotion is good too. Thank you so much for coming to our demonstration today, folks. You guys have a great day up there. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>